Le Mans, one of the greatest circuits in in the world with mo some of the most amazing cars ever driven around it. And then you also have Thunderflash, who is a very good modder. So today, what I'm going to do is taking the quickest prototypes from certain eras which M Mr. Thunderflash has converted into AMS2, modded into AMS2, and see which one might be the quickest. And then in the end, we'll see if there is a car in AMS2 which might be quicker than a certain vehicle which I'm interested to see. But let's get into our first class, which will be Group C. So welcome to the Mazda 7-8. Seven eight seven B, which is probably my favorite Group C relic. Even though in the AMS2 doesn't have the proper sound. And since it seemed like the mechanical failures these cars were quite high, I will have to do them in test day. So that's why I'm doing this outlap. But then I can talk a bit about everything I know about this car. One Le Mans once before have it had the engine regulations kicked in on it so we had to switch to a 3.5 liter v10 i think it was engine i don't remember fully but they switched to f1 regulations which basically destroyed group c racing and this car is known for its interesting four rotor engine the only issue is that you can't get that iconic noise to the full extent in AMS2 since audio modding as far as I know is non is very limited and having driven this and another modded car in AMS2, I can say that they handle like the AMS2 Group C course, which is quite bouncy but still quite planted. Because you have the. I drove the Nissan before this, and the Nissan is very jumpy, a lot like the C9, and this is quite planted, which is a lot like the AMS2 Razer Nissan which I know sounds very odd. This car is very nice, and it has quite a nice noise. And obviously Flash has modded, ported over these cars from Project Cars 2. Either they were made by Slightly Mad studios or they were mods which were then ported over by him with permission from the mod creator which is a nice touch so with this car i'm going to i've done this talking lap Then I'm going to, when this lap finishes, I'm going to, to try and focus and put a good lap in. But I will hopefully be able to talk a little bit. So then I'm going to obviously confer, uh, compare all of these lap times and see which car is the quickest. I 
songs are maybe a bit too long in this car. Otherwise, this car feels good. It is also a bit slow, it seems. But that may be the regulations or something from that yet, I have no idea. wondering this is might be some interesting facts for you it used a as far as i know i think it was these cars used dog legs which are it, uh, a certain format of the gearbox gear shift i should say like the h pattern that's been hopefully one thankfully didn't ruin my lap and then what you might want to also know is that it uses a dog box or these cars use them and what a dog box is is type of gear gear box which you can use without having to use your clutch basically because you can see you, i can shift up without having to use the clutch and I can shift down also without using the clutch. It's basically a two-foot gearbox. Sometimes I obviously get these issues. So if we just take these issues into account when we are remembering how, how it was driving this car. Yeah, remember that. These cars are very tricky to drive in my opinion because they have downforce but the suspension and the whole platform is really shaky so it feels like they are hard to drive but you can get the hang of them but I think the Nissan Razr one version is very nice to drive because the low downforce version at least is very stiff suspension and I don't like bouncy cars so that's what I really like about that version and it seems like second gear has been destroyed even though I don't have any damage on because I was the game to the road so if you think about the damages I've done this is a 344.4 exactly but let's say roughly a 340 or something so now it's time to go into some things a bit quicker and a bit more modern let's jump into gt1 okay so now we are in the nissan gt1 car from 99 no idea if this car won or not. All I know is it's quite cool. If we're comparing, because we're comparing this to the AMS2 GT1 cars, I to tell you how it feels. Huh? This car feels slow. When I mean slow, I don't mean in how the vehicle is, as in like slow top speed or anything. It feels like its suspension is soft but stiff, so that its weight transfer is a bit late, later than I want it to be, which to me is very odd. I still haven't fixed that thing even though I've pointed it out quite a few times already you can see oh, it's go not so quick compared to the group C cars but it 
pushes out of it, out of the corners quite well. Right there. But yeah, this car is quite slow on the straight, barely hitting 300. Low gear acceleration is good until it gets into its sixth gear. Then it just slows down after 7500 RPM, which is quite strange. You can see accelerating up to 100 is very fast, 200 is also quite fast, up to 300 and it goes very slow. So this car is quite, it's a bit boring in my opinion. Drifted through the corners, it seems. I don't know if. Uh, I think this car will be slower than the G, than the Group C car. But let's see. has quite a bit of understeer, but that's a bit what you expect with the default setup. So the gears, yeah, the gears should be a bit longer and sixth gear should be a bit shorter. So, a 339.8, so I would say a bit quicker than the Group C car. Let's switch this steering wheel and let's jump into something which hopefully is a bit quicker but also a bit more interesting. Now we are in jumping into the Bentley Speed 8 which won Le Mans and broke Audi's streak. That's because it basically is an Audi underneath. It's a long story, but if you're watching Automobilistic, I think he's called, that guy has made an interesting video on it. I think, if I remember correctly. He talks about it, and also Driver61 talking about Audi's diesel cars. Shall be driving, I'll be driving one of them. This car is feels the same as the as the G, uh, Toyota GT1 car, and also it has the gears are too short. How great! I didn't do anything with the default setup to see how they would handle, and this car definitely wasn't set up for them all. So fifth gear and especially sixth gear are too short. And we will go on the rev limiter this whole This car it slides a bit. Handles quite well. I don't 
don't understand this default setup. It feels like it was tuned for a track with no, no straight. It does feel nice though. Until that happens. That wasn't a good time to sneeze. But you can see the acceleration is very good. And then you get to a corner, quite nice braking, and then you get out of the corner, which is the issue. You shift into fifth, then you shift instantly into sixth, and then you red line at 290. This car's quite a bit of me. Until you hit the wall. Which I've struggled with quite a bit. And struggle to not hit it. an interesting good lap it seems there 335 so let's jump into something which is quite a bit quicker say welcome to the audi r18 don't know if this car has well it looks like it does if i don't spin but this car has a diesel engine, which is quite, it was quite famous for having, since at the start, it was very good, and because it brought extra torque, also extra fuel efficiency, which meant it could drive quicker okay, we have to save some electricity at least for the long straight here okay let's push So I went quite fast. Still not fast enough, maybe. Okay. And then we are going through here. And this car won Le Mans, I think. And I believe this was the last car ever to use a diesel engine in WEC. And also the last uh, car Audi have ever raced in the top flight of Le Mans. Since they have now gone off to race uh, in, uh, what's in F1 in a few years. I wonder how, how that the tire things are actually quite accurate, which is quite nice a bit the boost power is immense now I can't use it anymore okay so there's a limit per lap of how much I can use it apparently which is good to know now at least I use it, used it on the straight. But this car is quite twitchy. 
but it has quite a lot of downforce so it has a few issues as you saw there See how it handles through here. Okay, so if you with the correct setup, it's flat through there. Let's see. Okay, so it is sort of flat. With the correct setup, probably that could be a really nice segment, but that's a bit like the Formula One cars in this game. Including the spin and everything, I got a 334, but probably a lot quicker. But let me jump into a car which is a bit like this, but definitely a lot quicker. Say hello to the Porsche 919 Evo, which is also called the Tribute, I think. Can I enable the arrest in there? Okay. Can we have the arrest enabled? Okay, so this car is very has quite a lot of grip. But also has a few issues it seems. Then let's see how quickly we can go on this street. Okay, so we are pushing quite high speeds. Quite a nice thing to have at low speeds. Still has not not very high top, not a very high top speed. I would have wished that the DRS would turn off when braking, but I don't know if that was a, was a thing which was implemented in this car or not. the braking performance okay, so the acceleration with this on at low speed is a lot they get to high speed so quickly oh my god so it seems like the top speed is roughly 320 without Anything on. I keep forgetting my DLS. Let's see how quickly we can go through here. I want to enable it. This car is quite understeery at high speed, especially so it's quite a bit of downforce, but probably produces quite a bit in the rear. the 316 point seven in this car 
I don't know, you can probably go a lot quicker. I'm not a perfect driver. But let's jump into a car which I think I know is quite a bit quicker. Say hello to the AMS2. To the, I mean, Formula Ultimate Gen 1. Which can do a sub 3 minute time. But let's see how I do can do how quickly I can go but this car is my favorite car in AMS2 again because it used to be this then the set then the the 1.5 physics update came and this car became quite sluggish so then I moved to like I didn't have a favorite until the Cadillac DPI no, not the Cadillac Depot, the Cadillac... What's it called now? The Cadillac uh, LMDH car, which I still quite like. But this car, I really like now again. But I'm not sure which one I like more, but it's between those two. But I just like this car about its just sheer performance. It's so... It's so... Performs very well. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why I really like this because it's the ultimate car. Because you can brake later than anything else. You're on the power a lot harder than anything else, and it just you can push it through corners like nothing else. It's like the ultimate car. It also was in in real life. I mean, the Mercedes W11 was quicker than the 919 Tribute around Spa. So I would think that this car should go quicker than it at its different circuits. Here and then because you can see how how quickly I can go, how quick I can go. But I'm I'm not the quickest it seems yet to optimize my driving. But still this car feels very nice. And then through here you can go flat. something I really like about this car is that you can go flat through there it just feels crazy can I do a sub oh I did a sub one three minutes fine I just love this car. I can drive around the, here on very So that was that. You could see that the Le Mans cars were very quick, but not quick enough compared to an F1 car, which is to be expected. But what do you think? Comment down below. And whilst you're down there, please hit the like button and also subscribe. My next video, we'll see what it will be on, but hopefully something interesting. But until then, I've been Racing Legend, you've been my amazing videos. Thank you for watching. Goodbye!